Howdy! Uh, welcome to Admin of Code 2022. This is a, a bel very belated day 19 intro. Um, I recorded the beginning of day 19 uh, back on like day 21, like December 21st, while I was on vacation. Uh, I got very stumped by the problem. I worked for two hours and just really couldn't get the, the, the key to the problem done. Couldn't even get part one. So I dropped it there. I was pretty tired. I think you're, if you watch this, you'll see that I was pretty low energy. But um, in this video, but then five days later, yesterday in real life, I picked up the problem again. I had some new thoughts about how to reorganize it, but more uh, directly, we actually figured out the trick, the thing that makes the problem solved or solvable. Uh, and we got it done in, in much shorter time, actually. So this is a full video of that whole process, but I'm gonna have in the description, there's chapters. If you wanna skip to the part where I actually solve the problem, uh, that'll be there. That'll be, uh, you can skip an, an hour and 40 plus minutes of me being low energy and uh, not solving the problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the whole solution's up on my GitHub. And if you guys wanna check out what the process was and, and in when I did solve it, I did point out uh, what that particular idea was that actually made it possible. And, and it wasn't really directed to the rewrite it was directly because of the rewrite, the rewrite made it easier to find, but um, we could have taken the original solution and gotten there. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. It's a bit longer of a video, much like day 16, but this is part of the process. It's the whole thing. So hope you guys enjoy it. Peace and enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to Advent of Code 2022, day 19. I've gotten a bit behind with these, but uh, we'll get them done before the end of the year, I'm sure of that. So let's start with day 19. Thanks you guys for following along. Not enough minerals. Your scan showed that lava did indeed form obsidian. The wind has changed direction enough to stop sending lava droplets toward you. Turn this down so I can see it all. Oh, it's a little too small for you guys. All right, we'll just handle it. All right, uh, so the elephants exit the cave. As you do, you notice a collection of geodes around the pond. Perhaps you could use obsidian to create some geode cracking robots to break them open, all right? To collect the obsidian from the bottom of the pond, you'll need waterproof obsidian collecting robots. Fortunately, there's an abundant amount of clay nearby that you can use to make them waterproof. In order to harvest the clay, you'll need a special purpose clay collecting robots. <laughs> to make any type of robot, you'll need ore, which is also plentiful, but in the opposite direction from the clay. All right. E collecting ore requires ore collecting robots with big drills. Fortunately, you have exactly one ore collecting robot in your pack that you can use to kickstart the whole operation. Oh my gosh. Each robot can collect one of its resource per type per minute. It also takes one minute for the robot factory, also conveniently from your pack to construct any type of robot, although it consumes the necessary resources available when construction begins. The robot factory has many blueprints and you can choose from, but once you've configured it with a blueprint, you can't change it. You'll need to work out which blueprint is best. For example, we have these two blueprints. So I'm just scrolling down, getting the puzzle input. Well, actually, looks like the example input and the and the and the, and the main input are actually formatted differently. This is interesting. Let me just. Do this real quick. Make sure they're the same formatting. Okay. All right. So now they're formatted the same. The robot factories. One's one per line. Okay. Yes. All right. So we uh, already noticed that. The elephants are starting to look hungry, so you shouldn't take too long. You need to figure out which blueprint would maximize the number of open geodes after 24 minutes by figuring out which robots uh, to build and when to build them. Okay, so each robot 
costs four ore. So it would take your one robot four minutes to gather the four ore. Then um, and then you would have two robots. Does it take a minute for the robot factory? One, two, three. Oh, but a clay robot costs two ore. All right. So then you build a clay collecting robot. So in this first, so this first blueprint, you really just need to build two or three clay collecting robots uh, until you get enough to get an, an obsidian collecting robot and then and then you should be able to mine one geode all right so this is going to be similar to our last puzzle where we're going to have a step that the naive solution is to make a step function where we evaluate multiple possibilities. Um, we could start with a plan-based evaluation. So for each blueprint, we have to evaluate multiple possibilities on what the optimal strategy is, the optimal plan of which robots to create. Take the maximum, and that represents the maximum blueprint. And then we have to evaluate that against every other blueprint. So this is pretty interesting. However, by using blueprint two in the example above, you could do even better. The largest number of geodes in 24 minutes is 12. Determine the quality level of each blueprint by multiplying that blueprint's ID number with the largest number of geodes that can be opened by it in 24 minutes. In this example, the first blueprint has ID one can open nine, so its quality level is nine. The second blueprint has ID two and can open 12, so its quality level is 24. Finally, add up the quality levels of all the blueprints. Okay, all right, pretty interesting. I think we're gonna go similar to yesterday. We're just gonna take the more slightly smarter solution. Not yesterday, it was, a, it was day 16, right? That had the plan-based system. So we're gonna, let's start with parsing our input and then we're gonna, then we're gonna create a plan-based system and then we're gonna create an evaluation for each blueprint and then we're gonna sum that, so. All right, let's just start with Data class, class blueprint has an ID int or um, or cost int clay. Hmm. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Costs. Or int play int obsidian int equals zero. Okay, nice, def parse line string to 
to blueprint. All right. Okay, we got the ID. Now we need to go through each sentence. Um, they're all in the same order. Good. So we're, yeah, I mean, we're just we're just parsing right now. I'm just trying to parse each of these little parts of this input. Okay. All right, so this should give us everything and then our input is going to be blueprints. Okay, nice. And we're gonna, um, and then we're we should just create a all 
Or we should just print input and return sum of input uh, b dot blueprint.id times one for blueprint and input.blueprints. All right, and then I'm doing terminal stuff here. Just, I know it's too small for you guys, but I couldn't figure out how to increase it. So uh, not enough values to unpack. I keep saying trim and keep forgetting that the Python version of this function is strip. It's like the fifth time in all these puzzles you've seen me do it, but okay. Can't set attribute, okay, of course. Okay, costs not defined, costs, obsidian is not defined. Okay, we finally did it and we are printing, for the example, we are printing four or, then two or, then fourteen or and three, three or and fourteen clay, and then, okay, cool, all right we have parsed the input. So now we need to create, um, I think very similar to day 16, we wanna create a method which calculates the optimal geodes. So def um, optimize blueprint. Returns an int. And we're gonna do optimize blueprint blueprint here okay and that's that's our part one all right so we just have to do this i think the best way to do this is probably similar to day 16 where we create a plan instead of iterating each each minute we need only iterate you know the the number of choices that need to be made so so we need to generate plans What is a plan? Plan is a set of uh, choices and the choices are which robots to create and when to create them or in what order. So it's a list of a tuple of a time and a robot.
Okay. We're going to change our blueprint class to, to have a lookup. Okay, nicely done. All right, so, and then plan, planned build, a planned build is a named, named tuple of time and robot type. And then our plan is a list of planned builds. Okay, so we need we need some functions to help us here. So we need to evaluate um, the total amount of geodes created, and we need to about the feasibility. So is plan plan feasible? Plan, plan. Okay. For time in range of zero, 24, 24 minutes. Um, and we have a list of uh, what are these called? Uh, resources, right? Resources equals a dictionary. And this is a dictionary of robot int. And we have robots. And the robots start with robot.or1 so um uh, so first of all resort for for type count in robots.items resources type plus equals count so because each robot mines one unit of their resource and then and then true rest of plan equals plan if rest of plan zero zero or dot time equal to time, then if, oh, we also need a blueprint, blueprint, blueprint. Now we have to, so the, if we have a plan at this time, then we need to build a robot. So robot to build equals rest of plan zero dot robot costs equals blueprint dot robots robot to build for
cost and costs because it's a tuple, right? Actually, cost should just be All right, we're gonna change some stuff up here. Okay, sorry for being changing some of this stuff, but you know, gotta get it right. All right. All right, much better, that, that is better. And uh, these all need to be changed to Sorry. Replace string cost up parse. Parse costs. Okay, all right, we did R4 line replace. <laughs> um, okay, and so for type cost in costs dot items, if resources type. I get type zero. If we don't have enough resources for the cost, raise exception, infeasible plan, or just return false. Okay. And if we don't return false for this cost, then we want to build the robot. So we do robots, or uh, otherwise, resources type minus equal cost and robots type plus equals one. Uh, robot to build, robot to build. Okay, and then rest of plan equal rest of plan one by, and then continue, right? And when you get to the end, we return true. Okay, so we have an is plan feasible. Nice, all right. So for example, we can uh, test the plan that uh, print is plan feasible, input up blueprints. All right, so we, and let's just, let's just have this plan we have Land build full plan to Uh, 
and it's a clay, robot.clay, or minute three. So yeah, zero, one, two. Yeah, we'll do three here and we'll do one to 25 here. And another issue with our plan is that you could have more plans in the same time. So while rest of plan, actually just while this condition, we're gonna loop. Because you could have more than one plan at the same time. So, so clay, spend two clay in minute five, planned build five robot.clay. And in minute seven, build another clay. All right, my computer's being, I'm getting warm. And a minute 11, obsidian. And minute 12, clay. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, we built another obsidian. And continue eighteen. Build an build a geode. And in twenty one we build another geode. Nice. And instead of, uh, yeah, and then, you know, we, we could do this to also return the score of the um, plan, but if we already know it's feasible, we don't have to calculate as much. So def plan score. It's, it's just gonna be 25 um, for so geodes time build times plan equals time for time comma robot in plan if robot is equal to robot dot geode and then return sum of 25 minus time for time in geode build times. So if you build one a mile minute 24, then it should be minus one, right? So, because if you have one that's built in minute 24, then uh, it should be 24 minus time. Yep, okay. Then we should be able, then let's uh, let's do is plan feasible example plan and print plan score example. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's make sure this all works.
Okay, true and nine is correct. Nice, okay. Now we have to actually solve the problem. We've got our helper functions and our types and parse the input. Now we actually have to create a good plan. So, let's do generate plan. So, <sighs> let's add up our Reese. So when we're, if we are given a plan, let's add up our total number of robots and total number of resources. So robots equals Okay, so this this gives us all the robots that were built, and all the and then we add one in case it's or, because or starts with a one. For each robot and resources equals Just thinking here about how to do this. My question in my mind is, should we do this as if we're at a certain point in time? Like say, you know, minute 20 or whatever, and look toward the next robot we can build? Or should we act as if we're always thinking about what we have at the end? So, total resources is going to be 24 minus time for time comma robot in plan if robot equals r minus sum of blueprint dot robots robot dot dot get r zero four underscore robot in plan so this subtracts the costs of each robot so our re this is, should be the total resources that we have at the end of our total time. And 
what we want to do is maximize geodes. And so we basically want to build every let's just return let's just figure out every neck what is the next possible thing we can build. So can build is if we have enough resources. All resources are cost type is greater than or equal to blueprint dot cost for cost type cost in blueprint dot robots are dot items. Okay, so this will tell us everything we can build. And we should, generally speaking, always optimize to build obsidian. You know, build clay. So you start with a bunch of ore, then you build clay, then you build obsidian. But sometimes you might need to build an extra ore, you know? Like, what if it costs a lot of ore to build a geode cracker or something? So, then... For... robot to build in can build we have to figure out when we can build it It looks like we're doing both. <laughs> um, end time. So we have resources now, resources at end. Right. So time to build equals end time. Resources at time equals R. C for RC, RC in resources now dot items. So we do a little copy here while not all resources at time T greater than or equal to cost for T cost in blueprint.robots robot to build costs
Okay. All right, so then we found the time to build. So if time to build is less than 24, because why build at the end of 24, then actually, yeah, we don't care about the resources at the end. We care about the resources at the end minus one. So 23, we only want to build up to minute 23. Building a minute 24 doesn't do anything. So we're kind of guaranteed that by the time resources at time makes resources end, that resources uh, that we'll be able to build it. So we know, so we assert time to build is less than or equal to 23. And then we yield plan plus planned build time to build robot to build. And this will give us a bunch of plans. So return max, generate plans, blueprint, key equals plan score. Okay. Let's start running this baby. Hmm. Oh, we want to yield this plan. We want to yield that. We want to yield generate plans off of this plan. And uh, I guess if we don't have anything we can build, if can build, if not, if len of can build is zero, then just return, just yield plan. Like return it. Don't recursively call. For sub plan and generate plans, new plan, yield sub plan. Nice, okay, all right, so that should do it correctly. Still max time for time and plan. Key error, robot to build is false. What? All right, that was just some bad syntax here. We really wanna put the robot type in if the condition is true. Some optimized blueprint. What's happening here? We're returning an empty list. Ah, because it's maximizing the plans. Ah, okay, so. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so didn't not doing it right, but uh, uh, best equals zero empty for plan and generate plans blueprint if plan score plan is greater than best zero best equals plan score plan comma plan return best zero print new best okay and this is not going to have anything because we're still broken print plan plan all right what plans are we generating nothing all right so let's Let's figure this out from, so it's being passed in an empty plan. Ah, generate blueprint to help if we call it correctly. All right. All right, so import IPDB, IPDB to set trace. So if we have a PDB installed, okay. Um, end time, so the plan is empty. And the blueprint has costs. Okay, robots should be, there's the one or. Yup, okay, and then resources now should be zeros for everything. Okay, and then resources end. Oh, is zero because we're not handling the or. So plus 23 minus 23 if r is equal to or. Because we get free 23 or basically to use. So this assertion failed, which doesn't make sense because because we should just be adding robots. All the way up to resources end. Okay. All right, that fixed it. Okay, optimizing blueprint run is running forever, basically. So we're not doing it very good. Job. There shouldn't be that many plans to create. So we must have something wrong.
Okay, I'm gonna run this and then kill it really quick and try to look at the results. I know it's too small for you guys, but it's almost too small for me too. All right, time equals two, clay, six, time equals 16, obsidian. And then or, or, or. Wait, this plan is trying to build like a ton of clay robots in times 23. All right, I'm gonna see if this is even feasible. I mean, I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm wondering, okay, how can we, you know, tilt this toward building what is necessary for the geode, right? Because the whole point is geodes. says it's feasible, but that it has score one. And let's just remove building anything other than geodes in time 23, because there's no point, right? I guess let's annotate the can build array with when it can build.
right? So this is a little heuristic to save us on some things, right? not clear to me that it's not working yet. I mean, these plans all look feasible. All right, so 14, that's wrong, all right? So we were doing, so it said new best 14, but Unless it's plan two. So first you build a clay. Then you build another clay. Then you build an obsidian. And you build a clay at the same time. Maybe you can do that, okay. Then five units later, time lit, you build another obsidian. Then at 16, you build a geode. And at 20, you build another geode. And at 20, you build an obsidian as well. This doesn't seem right. Uh, you know what? I think at the same time, I think we're not accounting for simultaneous costs. Right? Doesn't seem possible in for plan, so print is plan feasible plan input dot blueprints zero print plan score plan Return one W tab. Yeah, it says true in 14, but it's definitely not possible. So let's just, I think it might be a simultaneous cost thing. So is plan feasible? Print time. All right, I know it's a lot of debugging, but we're just trying to get this right, okay. So at time 20, we have one ore, three clay, two obsidian, one geode. Resources are five ore, 13 clay, six obsidian, three geode. 
we build the geode with cos or two obsidian seven. We build an obsidian, cos or three and clay fourteen. We don't have fourteen clay. Clay is thirteen. Oh, I guess it's incremented to fourteen. Uh, the cost is at the beginning. You spend two or at the beginning of a minute. Okay, so... This should prove this infeasible. Yeah, it's now infeasible. All right, so now we just need to figure out how to represent that in our generate plans. So to build something in the 23rd minute, we only get up to the 22nd minute to, get, to aggregate the things. So our resources, the last time it's reasonable to build anything is at the end of the 22nd minute. So we have the resources at a given time at the end of that time. We just return time to build plus one here. So yeah, when can build. So our resources at the end are set to 22. Ah, so like in time, is this when we're building, we want to start now, what we have, actually, what we have at this point is in time, uh, minus one. Right? That's why we have 22 here.
Okay, I got the new best plan nine. Wow, oh, it's evaluating a lot of items for plan one. This may be too many. Jesus. Okay, well one thing is they're all passing the feasibility check. So that's good. So we can remove this excess cost. This really shouldn't be that many plans. Maybe four types of things you could at most build, maybe 10. So that's like four to the 10. Okay, so it's optimizing. Okay, evaluate clay plus obsidian. And then clay, obsidian, clay. And eventually it discovers that obs building obsidian first is the bad choice. Starting to get confused as to why this is just taking so long. I just would not have thought that this would take. generate this many plans. For the example, I've been doing this, you know, 
on the main one seems excessive. Okay, so maybe, you know, we should rethink our strategy. Uh, the idea of building plans seemed nice, but unless we can do it more optimally, perhaps backwards. Okay, this plan can build 12 obsidian. Let's try to figure out how it does it. You start with one ore robot, which will create 23 ore. Or tw 24 ore, right? Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that first ore robot doesn't have any time. So it starts with one. Because if it's built in time one, and we're at time 12, then you have 11 and it generates a letter. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right, so. Let's just say you start going for clay because ore costs are low and obsidian costs are high. We want to generate more obsidian first. So, and since clay costs on obsidian are high, we need to generate clay. So you do every, after three minutes, you generate, make a clay. After six minutes, you have two clay. Hi. I'm, I'm stuck. And I'm still on camera, but I'm stuck. Oh, no. I'm just going to grab some lemon and a tank top. My plan generator that I thought would make maybe 100,000 plans is making you know, 13 million plans, and I don't know why. Yeah, something's very wrong. I think our strategy can still work. We're generating correct plans, feasible plans that are matching, but we're just generating way too many of them.
Okay, I'm just going to print like two plans from way high up. All right, we're 50,000, we're gonna to get to 100,000 here in a second. We'll print these three plans and exit. All right, so at 100,000, we're still doing clay, 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 or, 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 clay. Or, oh, because there's a lot of ores and clays. like a lot of ores and clays. I think I'm going to keep ore costs to a minimum. I'm going to maximize number of ore builds to three. What does this do to our because you know when I look at the result like we don't need to build a lot of ore just like siding on it It's like the best, the best plans are the ones where you built ore and then clay and then obsidian and then geode, right? So let's limit our plans to that. We're going to limit the builds to just robot.or and robot.clay. Else, limit elif plan negative one dot robot is equal to robot.clay. So we're only moving forward. that is probably optimal. That's what my intuition tells me.
Okay, we got eight with blueprint one, which is not correct. The example goes clay, 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 obsidian, clay. Oh, okay, so you go back to clay, so. I don't understand how it's still making so many. Doing so many generate plans at 23 at the end time. With these really long, 15 long plans. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, our goal is to get a geode robot as soon as possible, which means we need three ore and 12 obsidian. To get 12 obsidian, we need to create an obsidian robot. So our goal is to create an obsidian robot, which takes three ore and eight clay. So we need a clay robot, so our goal is to create a clay robot, which takes three ore. So we wait. We evaluate what if we made an ore robot, which would take, and then to increase our ore output, which would take longer than just waiting for the clay output. So we're just waiting to make a clay robot. So we decide to make a clay robot at four. So at minute four, we have one ore and one clay robot. And then at two minutes, three minutes later, so at minute seven, we have another clay robot. Um, and we have three clay, and then it'll take three more days. So we keep mining clay. So it's just Blueprint 2 is just clay, 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 obsidian, obsidian, geode. Geode, right?
Oh my gosh, it's just still creating super huge. Like it generates the best plan like super quickly. And then it takes a long time. Like I just, I guess I'm just, I don't know if we can optimally create a best plan. Now it's doing number two. It found 12 really quickly. 27,000 items. All right, definitely got something wrong here. This um, this plan is not feasible, and it's not nearly optimal. So this says it's feasible, but why would you ever create two clay, two of the same robot in the same turn? Unless I guess you had so many ore. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna limit ore production again. <laughs> Limiting ore production limits a lot of the answer. We get 33, which is the correct answer. All right, it's a definitely a heuristic, but it's a heuristic that might work. Let's go input. It's gonna take a little bit to run. It's gonna take a few seconds per If we don't get it right, we can increase the uh, number of ores allowed in the plan, <laughs> basically, uh, and then try to go from there.
All right, this should finish soon. Let's just wait for it. Fan is spinning up. This has a best of 13. Which plan is it? Blueprint 23. Okay, we're almost done. I can write better print functions for these things. Oh, why is 23 going for so long? Maybe because it's cheap. You can buy, build a lot of clay. All right, well, maybe we think about it differently. I'm still trying to think through how could we just do this optimally. The only thing that's costing clay is obsidian. And the only thing that costs obsidian is geode. So really the only thing you have to optimize is ore. Because everything else can be just be calculated, right? Okay, we've gone up to, what is that, 10 million for number 23? I guess I'm going to let it go. I mean, really ain't got much choice. So we either build one or zero ores at the beginning. Then you build one to three clays. And then you switch over to obsidian.
Clay costs three ore. Okay. I'm just gonna add a heuristic. Okay, so what I did was I, ma I basically started counting, all right, so when do we hit the best? And then after 100,000 after the best, just quit, right? Because, like, we're not generating good options after that. So let's see how long this takes. up to 23, 25, 27. Two, one, two, two. We have an answer, actually. No, that's not an answer. I... Two, one, two, two. Yes, I have to wait another minute because I accidentally pasted it in self. So. I mean, we should be able to limit the space of solutions to much tighter to like, or or clay, clay, clay or obsidian, obsidian. Uh, Geo. <laughs> Four seconds left to wait. Two, one, two, two. That's not the right answer. Too low. Let's try increasing the allowed number of ores at the beginning. And if this doesn't work, I think I'm going to take a break, come back to it. Just a lot more plans than I thought there would be. Let's 
Like, given a certain plan, can you choose an optimal? Like, so we've made our two clay. We realize the time to make an obsidian would be would take 14 turns. Time to make another clay and then make obsidian would take minus 2, 12, divide by 2, 6, 8. So we choose to make another clay. And then once you've made two clay, the time to make obsidian is 7, but the time to make a third clay is two, so that would make it take you to have ten left, and then divide by three is going to be four, so that's going to be six, so that is less. We got another answer, two, 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 six. It's still, still too low. Yeah, we're just not, we're using too many heuristics because we're not being optimal. Yeah, so, all right, so after, minute, after you've created the third clay collecting robot, and minute seven, you have six clay. And you have three clay collecting robots. So your goal is to make an obsidian. So you have six clay, so you need eight more clay. You have three clay collecting robots, so that'll take three turns. The other option is to create another clay collecting robot. Which you can do anyway. So that your next thing is to make it an obsidian. But then you still have two or so you, you decide to make another clay collecting robot to create a second obsidian. Yeah, I'm just not sure. I think I'm going to take a break. Think about this. We need less heuristics, more optimality to create less plans. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back. Um, it's been quite a few days since I last recorded. I decided to really lean into my vacation and not do Advent for a few days. So the last time I recorded was day 19 and I didn't finish part one. So it's been a few days, so I'll have to kind of get back into it. But this is me continuing part one of day 19. And I did have one intuition while I was away. And that was that perhaps when thinking about creating, uh, finding the optimal outcome of a blueprint, that perhaps it was that any time you have a partial plan and you're optimizing for what you should make next, there's one optimal choice. And that each choice of what you do next, which robot you create next, uh, can be optimized. And that if we build a function that recursively calls itself with partially more plans and we just return the optimal plan or the number of, of geodes that we get from that each plan, we should be able to calculate an optimal plan from any one point. And so I think I'm gonna restart this 
optimization with a new um, a new plan. <laughs> I mean, I know we're creating plans, but uh, instead of like generating a million plans and evaluating each of them, I'm going to create a function that uh, makes the best choice or evaluates each possible choice and tries to figure out what the best um, one is. And I think that is a good way to solve this problem. We already found that just generating a million plans not gonna work out. So let's try a different strategy. So def, um, we're, we're still optimizing Blueprint. And let's take a plan. So best, so The first thing we want to do is we want to evaluate where we are at. So we need resources, robots, and time. So current time. All right, and we already do this up here, so. current state. So we have our current robots. and we have our current resources. So what we want to evaluate first is when we will be able to build each next each kind of robot. So how long will it take until we so uh, build times for each kind of robots so for R in robot. It will be R colon blueprint dot robots robot dot, um, no, for each robot R and what we were are going to calculate is the maximum time to have enough resources so max of cost minus robots uh, resources now dot get cost type divided by robots dot get cost type zero we 
we'll just make a function that does this. So, um, costs equals blueprint dot robots robot type return. Um, max time equals zero for cost in costs cost type cost amount in cost dot items scroll up we want to if So uh, robots of type equals robots .get cost type zero. So first of all, if we don't have any robots of this type, we have to set return infinity. We'll just use you know, 100 for this. If cost type robots .get cost type zero is equal to zero return 100 else return else if time to so we have our cost amount, we needed resources equals cost amount minus resources now dot get cost type zero. So how many, how many resources do we need versus what we have now? And then we just need to divide and take a ceiling of, so then TTB time to build is Math dot seal int import math needed resources divided by robots. type and so what we have here is the time to build the number of turns to get the needed resources given the number of robots we have nice so if TTB is less we need minimum time to build right no, we need maximum because each cost has to be. So if TTB is greater than max time, max time equals TTB, return TTB. So this could be zero. Well, so oh, needed resources could be negative. So if needed resources less than or equal to zero, return. Uh, continue so only if it's greater than zero do we want to do this calculation otherwise it's zero and doesn't matter okay so we have a time to build function so take time to build r for r in robot nice all right so we have a nice little f or map here And let's do if time to build R is less than 100. Or actually, let's, let's use negative one. So we'll just say greater than equal to zero. Nice. So if it's impossible to build, we return negative one. And so we can only evaluate um, 
build times that are available. So the things that we need to evaluate are optimized outcomes equals R optimize blueprint blueprint plan plus So we just, so we can call to optimize blueprint recursively here, increasing the plan. Um, we should have a, you know, every recursion needs a, uh, needs to have an if statement at the top to return. So we need to do if current time is greater than or equal to 24, return plan score plan. And what I want to do here is I don't think this will return fast enough, is I want to do some pre-optimization before we recursively call. Some of these we just don't need to choose. But initially we're going to run with what we have. All right, and then time to build. We need to filter out time to builds greater than 24. Um, if TTB is greater than equal to zero and TTB you can't build two robots at the same time. So if time to build is zero, we have to set it to one. It, time to build is always one because our current time starts at zero and you're never building on the first turn because you have no resources. And any time our, our current time is, our, is the last time we built something. So uh, it has to be, and so you have to wait until the next turn to build anything. So max time is all, so we got to start here at one. And TTB plus current time less than or equal to 23. Right, because you only want to build on time on turn twenty-three. If optimized outcomes, if it's empty, then we just want to return our current plan store. Return plan score plan. Otherwise, return max optimized. Outcomes dot values. Nice. So 
we can try this one. This is a, this is a different strategy. We're using recursion here instead of recursive plan generation and evaluation. Okay, we're off and running on the example and it's taking forever. So, right, of course it is. So how can we do this more smartly? Let's let it run, see if it's correct. So let's evaluate what, like before we call optimize, so let's, let, let's say we get called on the first plan, right? We can either build or or clay. And can we calculate what will give us the best outcome before recursively calling it. Like, so for example, we have to evaluate, you know, making an or versus making a clay on the first term, but what about once we've made a clay collecting robot and we're sitting here at minute three and we want to evaluate, should we make an obsidian collecting robot? Or should we make a clay collecting robot? So the question is, if we make a clay collecting robot, does that decrease the time to build A, an obsidian collecting robot. And I think that it does. And then we wouldn't have to evaluate, well, what if we go make an obsidian collecting robot? And therefore we don't, like that would, it would, short circuit an entire set of optimizations. Right? So four, but then we wouldn't want to do the same for or, right? So what we're saying here is when we evaluate clay versus obsidian, creating clay, then obsidian will always be better because two clay collecting robots will create enough obsidian before one clay collecting robot will. However, if you did the same thing with ore versus clay, you might be like, oh, like I want to do ore instead of clay. So you want to tilt towards how fast can we make 
the robot we need with it, which is the geode. So we want to have a score on like time to geode. I mean, this is 80 seconds per, so this could work, right? I mean, there's 30 outcomes, so 30 minutes, 45 minutes to run the main input. Like building an ore collecting robot should be minimized. Right? Well, all right. I suppose for each blueprint, there are a set of costs. And the maximum number of robots you would ever wanna make is the number that any one robot costs of that kind. So max robots equals So what this says is never build more robots than are in the max robots array. Because having more than say four or two or is just not helpful ever. Now I'm, I'm just trying to think of like, can we ever determine absolute outcomes from some point in time? Like how can we know that towards the end we need to be making geode robots? Like can we evaluate the score of a partial plan? other than zero. Okay, that returned.
we got to allow it to make geode robots. We just disallowed it from making geode robots, which is why it didn't like it. Like, can we go one level deeper? Like, instead of uh, doing full recursion, can we just say, all right, of these build times that we have, like, let's make a state. Okay. Okay.
All right, so now we have a, like a state with time to build. So this is state.robotttb. So robot time to builds. Just at 11 seconds before we started prematurely optimizing it. possible future plans is a list of plan. This only took 20 seconds to run. This is the same basic algorithm we just had, but now it's in a this state object. And this is fast enough to run our input maybe. Okay, well, let's wait to do that. Um, in the meantime, we can think about like, what if it's not fast enough? Like what, I think the the genuine improvement over our previous solution was this max robots array. Cause we were arbitrarily limiting like the number of ore robots, but this max robots gives us a not a non-heuristic limiter to the number of robots you can try of anything. And it allows us to try a solution without having to heuristically optimize it. And it's running pretty fast. So I think we're gonna get a solution here. And hopefully it's the right one and we can move on to round two. I remember the last, yeah, this like 23rd Blueprint is pretty long. Oh, but it churned through it. Oh, this is pretty good. Maybe we don't have to do some other optimizations. What I was gonna maybe do was like, do like a shallow evaluation, like evaluate each sub plan for like just a pure optimal score, like a heuristic score, and then only do the top two. Um, but if we get a solution here, then I'm just gonna try it. Yes, finally, nice job.
yeah, I think the Max Robots, but that was the really, this was the only improvement over the two possible solutions. Although I think it was easier to build in this setup. So let's do part two, thank God. While you were choosing the best blueprint, the elephants found some food on their own, so you're not in as much of a hurry. You figure you'll probably have 32 minutes before the wind changes direction again. You'll need to get out of range of the erupting volcano. Unfortunately, one of the elephants ate most of your blueprint list. Now, only the first three blueprints in your list are intact. Okay, so three blueprints in 32 minutes. So they increase the time to 32 minutes, but we only have to do three blueprints. Okay. So divide, so increase by eight minutes. So increasing the number of things you can build. Um, but uh, taking only 10% of the blueprints. All right, in 32 minutes, the largest number, Geo Blueprint 1 is 56. However, Blueprint 2 is still better using it, 62. You no longer have enough blueprints to worry about quality levels. Instead, for each of the first three blueprints, determine the largest number of geodes you could open, then multiply those three values together. Okay. Return, optimize, blueprint, input.blueprints, zero, Just try our current function. And anytime we use 24, we substitute this for max time. So we're gonna do self.max time minus one here. And we call plan score, right? And we're gonna improve our main. So we don't have to So yeah, we just improved our main so we don't have to like do a, just like a return negative one because part one takes a little bit of time. Um, we don't have any prints in here to tell us. List index out of range. Ah, yes.
where is reduce func tools. Okay, all right, so now we're doing the example. And uh, yeah, it did return in some number of seconds. So I think we're good. I think this will work. Um, I think we just have it, we just have it right, so. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Jeez. Yeah, um, while we're waiting for this, um, Hope you guys are enjoying these. I mean, this was, uh, it was, I didn't wanna quit for the vacation, but it turned out it was like just the best choice for me. It was 108. Wait, that's not correct. Oh, yep, here's the bug. bug. This is why we double check with the example. So um, this will take a little longer. So what we weren't, we were basically just optimizing on max time 24, not 32. So we may not have a good solution here. This might just take way too long, although, you know, I'm willing to wait kind of a while. I'm gonna start this off on another tab. if either of these finish anytime soon. Um, they may not, so while we're doing that, we can think about what the best way to do this is. So interestingly, when you have 32 minutes, the optimal route to create the most geodes actually creates an OR robot at the very beginning. So, which is totally different than the strategy to create the optimal robot for 24 minutes. And that is very interesting because, yeah. We still have that because like, I thought maybe you could short circuit it by optimize for 24, then add, then do eight more minutes, but that's clearly not true. You need to take a totally different route. They're both going crazy. My computer is whirring. So yeah, um, yeah. when I was uh, on vacation, I enjoyed it. It was very nice, um, but I really want for the rest of the week here, I'm gonna do 
either one or two problems a day and try to get the, re the last of these hard problems done. Still gonna record them. I'm um, not gonna be as regimented about it, but uh, it should be fun to get this done. I mean, I enjoy this stuff at the end of the day. So, all right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to finish. So I'm gonna close the video for now and I'll see you when we pick back up. Hey again, um, I just got back from one of my runs. Uh, before I left, I did do some off camera work on this. Just some thinking like, oh, maybe every plan should start with a an or. And I also did some like heuristic optimization that I had talked about while we were working earlier. Um, but the original um, run that we that I sent off before I closed just a moment ago in the video, but a few hours ago in real life did finish. So I figured I'd try it on camera and we'll see if it works. It did, it's correct. Hey, you know, it only took an hour and 22 minutes to run. So, you know, not the worst thing. And we got day 19 finally done. Good work, nice job boss. Um, I, you could probably do this much better. And I'm gonna go look up some solutions to try and understand what those are. Uh, gotta always be learning and trying to improve. But for now, we're gonna sign off. Cheers.